right, so, uh, well, welcome. This is uh, the pods introduction. Uh, we're going to go through some of the information about like what pods is, what, it, what you can do with it, uh, what types of content you can do, uh, what types of fields we have, and uh, a couple more other uh, minor things uh, involving like, what you actually need to use it. Um, so here's a, just the basic WordPress install here. I've got a Vagrant set up here. And uh, I, I went ahead and activated some plugins and components. Uh, so you can migrate packages, uh, basically export and import your stuff between sites, uh, and some other things that are useful in uh, other parts of our presentations. Uh, but here, are the, here's the add screen, and uh, here you can see that you can add new content types. But you may get confused here because there's uh, an option called extend, and you may not know whether you want to add or extend. But if you keep it simple, adding is adding new content types, and extending is taking existing content types and using them with pods. So uh, you shouldn't get too much confused once you uh, read up a little bit on here, but uh, we've tried to make it as easy to understand what you're doing here. Uh, each side of these have the same sort of options, but let's go ahead and go to the create. So by default with pods, you can create new custom post types. Uh, just like posts or pages, you can add articles or uh, books. And then custom taxonomies, you can add those as well, and those are like colors, categories, tags. Uh, and custom settings pages is kind of pretty new in one of the most recent releases, and you can actually set up a, um, like a homepage settings page, so you can just uh, manage some stuff that you have on the homepage, or you can add things for other parts of your theme or your site or app. Um, and then we have a thing called advanced content types. And this is uh, basically what Pods was born from. Um, Pods became a plugin in 2008, October, and um, it was birthed out of Drupal. Uh, a Drupal developer um, used CCK, and that's before CCK was merged into Drupal itself, and that's the uh, content type creation kit. And uh, basically, he needed something for WordPress, and sure enough, there was nothing there. And uh, so he just built a plugin, and about a few days after that, someone, luckily, uh, one of my old bosses, he had mentioned, oh, someone mentioned this plugin. Uh, should we use this for a project? At the same time, we were using something that I was about to be building um, for the same sort of thing. And so we said, yes, let's try it out. And uh, I sort of got an addiction to it. And uh, I <laughs> couldn't stop using it. I couldn't stop submitting bug, uh, bug fixes and feature requests and code. And basically, uh, within a week or two, I was part of the team. Uh, it's just how open source works when you have people around who want to help. Um, you can become a part of a project like Pods. So, I mean, if any of you are addicted to Pods, feel free to help. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was a pretty cool plugin, and it all started with the advanced content types. And what that does is it creates new tables in the database. Um, and what that gives you is a, a streamlined list of columns uh, for data to be stored. Whereas posts in the WordPress database have a post table, and for all your extra fields, you have another separate table but it's confined. You have all of your fields inside there for all of your content. So um, there's two well, there's two primary columns in that table, uh, the name of the field and the value. And in database architecture, that can be very difficult to work within if you have a lot of content you have to query in a specific set of ways. Um, so there are some restrictions there. So advanced content type sort of fills that need um, and it gives you a more optimal approach. And we have some really cool things coming that are born out of custom post types and advanced content types that is coming up in a future release when we have some time to work on it, um, where you can actually create new WordPress objects, object types. Um, so like you can create new post types, but they're not post types, they're a new custom object type with their own object type table and their own object meta table. So it could be pretty useful for cases where you sort of want the best of both worlds. Um, but that's getting ahead of things. Um, so advanced content types, uh, let's go and just create one of those. Just well, I'll start with custom post type just to keep it within WordPress. Uh, let's do article. And we have some advanced options here if you wanted to. Uh, some of our components, uh, like advanced content types, can be enabled, uh, but by default are not. Uh, and then table storage is also an option as well, where you can store your stuff inside the meta table, or you get a little bit more like advanced content types and have your own table for all your fields just for post types. So uh, article could have its own table just for its article fields but everything else will operate just like it would in a normal post type. Uh, we integrate with the metadata API, so if you still use get metadata, update metadata, uh, delete metadata, everything will still function 
uh, as if it would it, it were expected to, uh, but it would all be mapped to that table. So it's um, it's a it's a bit of a, a useful thing depending on your use case. So we've we covered a lot of ground in um, in our feature set. So uh, I'm just going to go to the meta base here. You can customize the pod name, but by default it's uh, whatever the uh, singular version is. So if I want to do article or uh, oh my god article, I can do that like that. And then next creates it. Big bang boom. There it is. I can edit add fields. Um, there's a number of field types and such you can do here. Uh, let's go ahead and add one. Uh, so you give it a label like, uh, let's say, author. Uh, and this is going to be separate from the WordPress author, so let me just say uh, article author. And uh, you have a number of different field types to choose from. And there's uh, text fields like uh, a single input. Uh, there's a website, sort of like a, uh, it has validations, it has formatting, um, phone, email, password. Uh, password, something to be aware of is, it is, it's not meant for actual passwords, it's meant for something that just has a password uh, input type. So uh, we're working on some patches to, to encrypt it and have it saved uh, in a, a better way for those who want to use it for actual password data. Um, but uh, there's also a plain paragraph text, which is like a text area. Uh, there's a WYSIWYG editor, which is a tiny MCE editor from within WordPress. And there's also a syntax highlighting field, which is really useful if you're doing something uh, code related. So like on our site, we have a usage of code fields all over for our docs area because we have lots of co code examples and we don't want it to uh, populate as if it were actually code and display on the page. We want to make sure that it's uh, displayed in such a way that uh, it's not displayed as HTML. It's shown to you as what HTML is. Um, and we also have date and time fields of all sorts. Uh, if you have a date time combination, or maybe just an event date or event time, you can do those sort of things. Uh, plain numbers, which is just numbers, one, two, three, four. Uh, currency, uh, we have a number of currencies supported, and you can have additional ones as well. And uh, yeah, I should mention uh, dates and currency and numbers, but those all have internationalization, so you can add additional formats. Uh, you can choose from a number of the ones that we have built in. Uh, we have just about most of the date formats built in that you would mostly need. Um, we have really, this is probably the most powerful parts of the field sets uh, are the file uploader and the relationships. And that um, lets you use it within our API uh, to traverse data. And it's, um, it's a really cool feature. Uh, you, when we get time to go through it, we'll walk through that. And then, uh, of course, there's a checkbox and a color pick. But uh, for relationships, let's go ahead and choose uh, well, I'll show you some of the options here. You can have just a custom defined list where you just type in some text and make a choose from that. But what I recommend is if you're doing something where you're uh, constantly using data and you need to display and you need to get, add additional data to that, uh, you may not want to have a simple custom defined list. You may want to actually relate it to another post type or taxonomy or uh, a number of other things here. With our advanced relationships component, you have a number of options here to choose from. There's uh, users, user roles, capabilities, uh, media, comments, image sizes, uh, like what image size you want to have listed for the author's bio pic. Um, you know, if, they're, if they're featured, maybe you want a slightly bigger one or a different size. Um, navigation menus, <coughs> formats, statuses, database tables, you can relate to a gravity form table if you want to. Uh, themes, choose what theme uh, that is in uh, your WordPress and do something with it. Um, page templates, sidebars, we, we cover a lot of things. Um, and that's just because there's so much you can do once you have a relationship field that uh, the options are almost endless. Um, this list can be added to. You can extend it with other code. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty big part of why I used pods to begin with. Um, and it's just consistently gotten better and we're excited to keep uh, cultivating it. Um, and uh, as part of the options you get, uh, th this is available additional field options for just about all field types. So there's things you can define like if it's a single or multiple select. Uh, there's things we can define if it's a drop down, uh, radio buttons, or autocomplete. Uh, we have a feature called Tagable, which will let you create new um, options. So like if you wanted to have article authors and you have Tagable field, you, as you type, if it doesn't exist, it will create it on save. Uh, that's pretty useful. And um, Advanced, we have just some generalized things here. We can add some CSS, uh, some value to set a default value. You can get a parameter from the, the get request the query. Uh, and also you can restrict access to uh, roles, admins, capabilities, 
and you can even just hide it. Um, so that's pretty, pretty dang useful. Um, and custom post types get labels. These are all the labels available to you within WordPress itself and the WordPress API. Of course, we use the API to register your post types, so we're using just about everything that they have and, and exposing that to you, uh, to you for, for automatically right here. Um, something you'll notice, though, is I only have these two fields filled in. However, all of these things are already filled in for me in this label here. So I can see add new article, and that's what it will be. Um, so it's, it's pretty smart. I can say, um, do that, and then as soon as I change it, it'll change in the text there. So that's a little fancy thing I did so that you don't have to fill, um, you don't have to fill every single one in, which is good because uh, it takes a while to fill all these in. Uh, so it does that for plural and singular. Um, I have in UI lots of options as well from within WordPress. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's boundless things you can do and configure for these post types. Uh, advanced content types have a lot as well. They have some custom stuff we've done, uh, and we're excited to expose some more of that soon for the other object types as well. Um, and then Frontier Auto Template is another plugin we have uh, for Pods Frontier Auto Template. And it lets you automatically display content inside of your templates. So when you go to single or list, uh, you can actually choose, you create a template within our Pods templates, and it'll automatically display that information. So it's, um, it's pretty useful. And um, Let's see, so a couple of questions I get common are, so I'm using POTS, I'm, I like to do it all myself, and that's perfectly fine, but um, how different is it from WordPress? What, do I have to change all my code? Will it just work? Well, if you have a built-in site, uh, let's say you have built your site at, for custom post types, you have your custom field names, you have everything all set. Um, let's suppose that you just install POTS and you just recreate your post type and you just disable that in your code. What does it change in your code? Nothing, as long as you've built it in such a way that um, can be utilized uh, like Pods does. So if you have a relationship field, you expect to get back an ID from the, um, the meta query. And then um, you know, text fields, the same sort of way. So nothing really has to change. Um, we do have our own set of API, which is really powerful. I'm gonna go through that near the end of the, the presentation list. And I'm gonna show you some really cool ones that are um, data manipulation, uh, filtering, um, so just some cool ones, plus WordPress ones as well. Um, but I think that's all the time we have right now, but uh, uh, that's pods in a nutshell. Uh, it is still less time than our intro on pods.io, so that's the main point, uh, to have a smaller intro. So thank you very much.